School season is officially here, and whether you are in middle school, high school, college, or even if you're starting a new job, this video is for you. And for the first time ever, we're doing a back to school giveaway. So make sure that you watch until the end of this video to find out what it is about. I went to a Catholic private school in Venezuela, and I honestly loved my experience. And don't get me wrong, I was still bullied, I still had trouble managing my time, and even making friends sometimes. But I'm so grateful for all my years there because I shared me as a person. The only thing I regret is that I wasn't exactly following Jesus back then. Just to let you know, it's been over 10 years since I graduated high school. I know it's been a while, don't let this baby face fool you. But if I could go back, there will also be so many other things that I would do differently. And my prayer for you today and the reason why I even made this video is so that you can learn from my experiences and that you're able to have the best school year ever with Jesus. The first tip that I have for you is to embrace your identity in Christ. Christ. Jesus said that you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are a daughter of God and you have a purpose in his kingdom. You're not meant to be hidden and you're also not meant to fit in with everyone else. You're actually meant to stand out and shine the light that Jesus gave you. What I mean by this is that you don't need to change who you are in order to be like everyone else. You can be who God created you to be and have confidence in that identity. One of the biggest challenges that you might encounter at school is that a lot of people are going to try to tell you who you need to be. They will try to convince you that who you are is actually wrong. They will also make you doubt your identity. Do not believe them. You were created intentionally with a purpose. So stand firm in your identity with confidence and do not let anyone bring any doubt about who God created you to be. But maybe you're not even sure about who you are. If you are in Christ, if you're a follower of Jesus, I would like to share with you some of the promises that God has given you when it comes to your identity. And they are all tied to a scripture that I want you to read after watching this video. You are God's child. You are a new creation. You are chosen and loved. You are justified and redeemed. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are part of a royal priesthood. You have a purpose and you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. If you claim these verses as yours because they are promises of God about your identity, it doesn't matter what the world tries to say about who you are because you know who you are and who God says that you are. And if you know who you are and you love and respect yourself, other people will also love and respect you. Make sure that you write down what I just shared and maybe put it in the background of your iPhone or in your mirror. Make sure that you're watching that consistently. When I was struggling with anxiety last year, I had a few doctors give me diagnosis. They would all say that I had anxiety and panic disorder. My therapist would say that I was always going to have it. But then whenever I was reading the word of God, I learned that I actually didn't need to be anxious and that God had given me a sound mind, that I didn't need to be afraid of anything and I had to constantly remind myself of what the Word of God said and this is what truly set me free. I'm not saying that the doctors were wrong. What I'm saying is that I knew God's promises in my life and I needed to have it as a contrast with what the world was saying and choose the truth no matter what. I actually even had to make a video back then which I call the daily biblical affirmations where I'm reminding myself every day of the truths of who I am in God and who God is. And this has really helped me with my confidence every single day because now those scriptures are really imprinted in my heart. I highly encourage you to either watch that video or make a list about yourself too. This brings me to the next tip. Something that you should do when going back to school and honestly any time of the year is to renew your mind every single day. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to tell and approve what God's will is, his good and perfect will. We always have important decisions to make and I'm just a human. So from time to time, I still have trouble discerning what's the best decision. But this has gotten so much easier since I started reading the Bible and renewing my mind every day because now I'm bringing God into my situations. I'm asking him to guide me. And this is one of the best ways for me to listen to his voice. This book really has so many answers and instructions 
emotions and it's a real weapon for your life. If you want to start your school year off right, I highly encourage you to get a Bible if you don't have one. And I know what you might be thinking. Anna, I don't have the time or I don't have the mental energy to read the Bible. And listen, I'm also not a morning person and I do skip reading the Bible from time to time. But I'm not proud of that. And I know that whenever I'm consistently reading the Bible, the word gets imprinted in my heart. And life is so much better. I'm going to tell you a story that I'm not very proud of. When I was in high school, I was a huge procrastinator. I was really good at studying and memorizing things, but I would wait until last minute. And I really mean like the morning of the exam to study for the exam. And those mornings were so hectic. I would set the alarm at 4 a.m. and I would spend three hours using my study guides that I had prepared and just doing everything last minute. I will say that I'm a very fast learner, so I did well in some of those classes, but I do not recommend you to do this. It's so irresponsible. The reason why I'm sharing this is because it convicts me to know that I would wake up that early, even when I was really sleepy, just to study for the exam. Because I knew that if I didn't do it, I was going to fail. And if I could do that back then, then why wouldn't I be able to wake up just a few minutes earlier to read my Bible? When you want or need to do something, you do it. You don't make any excuses. You set an alarm and you get it done. And you don't need to wake up at 4 a.m. to read your Bible. But maybe you can wake up 15 or 30 minutes earlier to do it. And maybe you'll need some coffee or breakfast. But prioritize this in your life. But let's say that you slept in and now you really cannot read your Bible. You still have a phone. I'm pretty sure. So use the Bible app and read when you're on your way to school or listen to it if that's easier. During all my years of school, my parents would actually drive me and every single morning they would pray using scriptures. And although I wasn't a huge follower of Jesus back then, I was still learning the scriptures and they are now imprinted in my heart. I didn't know back then how important it was for me to know the word of God and listen to it every morning. But nowadays, I can go back to those scriptures and use them as the weapons that I need for my life. But maybe your family is not doing this. Don't wait for them to do it. Be the one that starts a tradition. And if you're wanting to be even more disciplined in your relationship with God and reading the Bible, I highly encourage you to get the Divine Takeaways Bible Study Journal. Not only you're going to receive Bible study tips, but you'll also have a space to write down all your observations, applications, your prayers, and the scriptures that are standing out to you in the Bible. The link is in the description of this video. The third tip that I would like to give you is to be faithful in your work. Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 to 24 say, work willingly at whatever you do as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. When God starts to open up your eyes when it comes to the things of this world, who he really is, and everything around you, it might be really hard to have the desire to focus on school. And I know that many Christians might actually find it meaningless to work for something that is not related to ministry. But God didn't tell us to just work in ministry. He told us to work and work hard and well in whatever we were doing and to do it as if he was our boss. There were two years of my life when I was working at this full-time job that I knew was temporary. And knowing that it was temporary definitely made it a little bit harder for me to give it my all but I would always read the scripture I actually had it in my desk because I knew that God had given me that job for a reason and I had faith that in stewarding that job and showing up giving my 100% would guarantee that God was looking at me and I didn't care if people didn't appreciate it I knew that God appreciated it and that he would give me a reward I know that studying for a math exam when you know that you want to be a singer might be really hard and I pray that the education system gets better and better. But as of now, you need to be faithful and study it, even when it doesn't seem to make any sense. You need to trust that as you do what's right and required by your school, God will reward you in the future, whether it is with the right school, the right program, the best career. I mean, think about Joseph in the Bible. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was imprisoned after being falsely accused. And in the midst of all of that, he still remained faithful to God and he was so useful to others. He had the ability to interpret dreams which was a gift that God gave him and he used it while he was in prison. He ended up being elevated from a prisoner to the governor of Egypt, second in command only to Pharaoh. 
through. And this story reminds me that no matter where you're at right now, if you're faithful and you're walking with God and working hard as if you are working for God and not men, God will honor your hard work and you will reap a reward. So always strive to be the best at what you do. And trust me, more doors will be opened up for you. First, because you have God with you. And second, because you will be more respected and reliable. Jesus said that he who is faithful with the little will be entrusted with so much more. Before I go to the next tip though, I would like to share with you our back to school giveaway opportunity. I don't know if you already did your back to school shopping and if you already got all your supplies, but as a sister in Christ, I would love to bless one of you so you can start off your school year the right way. And here's what I'm giving away. A Hosanna Revival journaling Bible, a Divine Reflections journal to help you keep up with your to-dos and your relationship with Jesus, a Bible study called Known, which will help you study more about your identity in Christ, highlighters from Mr. Penn, a brand new backpack, and a Starbucks gift card. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment that says I am in, and please make sure that you register in the link that I'm going to be sharing in the description of this video so you can get notified directly if you do get selected. Wish you luck! or even better, the favor of God. The fourth topic that I would like to talk about is friendships. How do you find godly friends at school? Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. I'm not telling you to go find King Solomon at your school or the wisest person, because I don't think that they actually exist. But please be very mindful about who you keep around you. If you're doing all the steps I already shared, then you are embracing your identity in Christ, you're renewing your mind every day, you're working hard for what you want, so you should be a lot wiser to then choose the right friends. Think about it this way, you're on this path and you need to find someone else who's on the same path. Otherwise, they're going to get you on a completely different path and they will make you compromise your values and who God created you to be. And once you have found the right person, don't just sit and wait for them to come to you. You need to be proactive and be the friend that you would like them to be. Luke 6 verse 31 says, Do to others as you would have them do to you. You want people to invite you to lunch? Then invite them first. You want someone to ask you to be their study partner? Ask them first. I hear girls every day complaining about not having God friendships but whenever they go to church and they see another girl that is also alone they completely ignore them they don't try to make a friendship with them and I'm not saying that everyone is going to say yes and that you'll be friends with everyone but the right person will say yes throughout this process of finding a friend you need to be praying for God to give you the wisdom and the discernment so that once he reveals that person to you your eyes are open and you can identify them and while you find your school bestie I do want to take a second to invite you to the Hinani network. This is our virtual family where we try to do life with each other. We do Bible studies, Bible challenges every month. We have a group chat and we're all just wanting to grow closer to Christ together. Check it out in the description of this video. Another thing that you might be wondering is how can you share your faith in school? It's very possible that if you're watching this video, you probably don't go to a school where people believe in Jesus. And if that's the case for you, don't complain. Take this as your responsibility to bring people to Christ. You have the key to freedom, joy, and heaven. And his name is Jesus, and they don't have him. And I'm not saying that you should stand at the door of your school with a sign that says, be a Christian or you're going to hell. But there are very effective ways that you can use to actually share your faith and bring more people to Christ. And I'm going to give you three simple steps to share your faith. Number one, lead with love. In the Bible, we're told to do everything in love. If you focus on building genuine connections with people and sharing the love of Christ with them, they will be more likely to actually listen to you and be open to Christianity. Number two, be an example. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The way that you live your life speaks louder than your words. When people see you doing well in school, respecting your teachers and your parents, showing kindness to everyone around you, being on time and having this peace and joy that surpasses all understanding, 
in. When everyone else is just complaining, they're gonna ask questions and they're gonna wanna have that peace that you have. And last but not least, be prepared to share the gospel. You need to know what you believe in and why. When opportunities arise, you wanna be able to share your faith clearly and respectfully. Trust that the Holy Spirit will give you the right words, but also do your due diligence and learn what you can say. A little bonus that I would like to share with you is how to deal with bullying. First, I pray that you never have to deal with bullying, but if it does happen, I do want you to be prepared for it. I personally dealt with bullying for a long time at school. Thankfully, I did have a good group of friends and most of the bullying was either cybernetic or verbal, so I never had to endure anything physical, but it still sucked. I was still bullied even by teachers at some point. Back then, I developed a huge ego. It was my way to try to cope with bullying because anytime that someone would bully me, I would think to myself, wow, I am such a big deal. These girls are taking time out of their day to tweet about me. I must be very important. But to be honest, no one likes being disliked and having an ego or being prideful about being bullied is not really a good thing. It seems like a sin to me. Because at the end of the day, if someone is taking their time to bully me, it means that they're actually deeply hurt or they're even jealous and none of those are good things. Hurt people will hurt people. And I wasn't perfect. I'm sure that at sometimes I actually responded to it and I had no compassion for them. And I wish that I had Jesus back then so I would actually pray for them in that time. Romans 12 verse 21 says, do not let evil conquer you, but to conquer evil by doing good. Even as an adult, I have faced bullying, especially as a Christian, but God has given me a new perspective about the people that have hurt me. And although it takes a lot of prayer, forgiveness, and strength from the Holy Spirit, I believe it is is possible to love on your enemies. Jesus said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God's love is so beautiful and so big that it covers even the bully at your school. When they see you responding with kindness, instead of anger, fear, or revenge, I believe their hearts can be stirred up and a change can actually actually happen only with God. And if things do get out of hand, I highly encourage you to seek support. You will need to protect yourself. So you need to tell a parent, a friend, or even a teacher and let them know about the situation. And before that even escalates to that, make sure that you are seeking support and that you're talking to someone about it. And remember that you have someone that they need, Jesus. I pray that during this school year, you make new friends, stay close to Jesus, get amazing grades and have so much fun. Be optimistic about what is to come and be grateful that you have God by your side every second of the day. Make sure to register for the giveaway so you can hopefully get this beautiful gifts to help you start your new school year off right. And if you would like to support our channel, we are a nonprofit ministry and we're doing our best to bring new content for you and new resources. And it helps us so much when you plant a seed of generosity. I want you to know that there is a way to help us by clicking on the link in the description of this video and leaving a gift. No amount is too small. Everything matters. And I pray that your generosity is not only honored, but also multiplied by Jesus. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to watch more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.